Welcome to TV 16's Live at 5. I'm Cassandra Morrison. And I'm Brianna Burcham. Several Little Rock banks have been robbed. And the identity of the suspect shot and the officer involved shooting at Bald Knob has been released. We'll have all of that for you and more, but first, your TV 16 news starts right now. Police have arrested two men who are accused of robbing a Little Rock bank earlier today. Police arrested Derek Gavin and Myron Thompson 20 minutes after they robbed the U.S. Bank on West Markham Street. Police say Gavin went up to a teller with a gun demanding cash while Thompson was the lookout. Police arrested the two men after they tried to flee on foot. No one was injured in the robbery. And the U.S. Bank wasn't the only Little Rock Bank to be robbed today. Police are investigating a second robbery that happened earlier this morning at First Security Bank on Bass Pro Drive. The two suspects were also arrested shortly after. We'll have more information as it becomes available. And police are also investigating a third Little Rock Bank robbery. Little Rock police say the Iberia Bank on West Markham Road has been robbed late last night when the armed suspect with a weapon showed up with a teller with a note demanding money. Anyone with information on the robbery is asked to call police. The identity of the suspect shot by a bald knob police officer yesterday has been released. Amy Collins was shot by a police officer yes yesterday poli after police say she approached an officer holding a knife. Police were called to the scene where they say Collins stabbed Michael Taylor in, at a bald knob convenience store. Both Collins and Taylor were taken to the White County Medical Center for treatment. Tracking homeless sex offenders in Little Rock is getting easier. In a unanimous vote, North Little Rock Council members put their support behind changing Arkansas's Sex Offender Registration Act. North Little Rock Police Chief Mike Davis says he wants to find a way to better track homeless sex offenders by having them report where they live on a monthly basis. Chief Davis says he hopes the City Council's vote will affect statewide change. A Garland County woman is still on the run a week later after escaping bailiff custody. Investigators say Mandy Cavanaugh of Hot Springs was in court bailiff custody for contempt when she slipped out of her handcuffs and hopped into the back of a pickup truck. The getaway truck is described as a black Chevrolet. Anyone with information is urged to contact Garland County Police. And a former Shelby County uh, prosecutor has been released from jail. Television courtroom judge Joe Brown was arrested earlier today on five contempt charges in a juvenile court case in Memphis, Tennessee. Brown was released from jail on his own re reconnaissance after the order was signed by another judge this afternoon. The Arkansas State Highway and Transportation Department will hold a public meeting tonight. The meeting is to discuss plans to widen Interstate 40 between Highways 365 and Interstate I-430. The public is invited to visit the Jess Odom Community Center in Little Rock tonight until 7 o'clock to ask questions, view displays, and offer comments. A routine bridge inspection will require a lane closure on Highway 67 in Hot Springs. Crews will be inspecting Highway 67 bridge over the Wachita River west of Donaldson. The work will reduce traffic to one lane and the closures will be tonight and tomorrow from 9 a.m. until 3 p.m. And Harding University's construction for the addition to the Prior England Science Center is ahead of schedule. According to Physical Resources Director Danny DeRamus, the project is expected to be finished by this July, which is a month ahead of schedule. The project will add several new chemistry labs, a lecture hall, backup generators, and four new offices. And a shooting at a Virginia Naval Station has left two people dead. The details after the break. And the death toll from the Washington State mudslide continues to rise. We'll have all that for you and more, but first let's take a look at your weather with Sarah Hines. Sarah. Thanks, Cassandra. As Chris, um, coming up after the break, we're going to go into weather and see these warmer temperatures that we've been having. But let's look at the thunderstorms it's going to be bringing into the week. We'll have more of that for you coming up along with your extended forecast after the break. Stay with us. Michael Adams? Here. <coughs> Michael Adams? Here! Michael Adams? 
Students who miss 18 days of school in any grade risk falling behind and not graduating. Absences add up. Keep track at boostattendance.org today. Mom, can we get some ice cream? Please, Mom, please. No, we're having dinner yeah. soon. Please. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of children in foster care who will take you just as you are. For those dealing with the daily struggles of caring for a loved one, we hear you. That's why AARP created a community with experts and other caregivers to help us better care for ourselves and the ones we love. What if a disaster strikes without warning? What if life as you know it has completely turned on its head? What if everything familiar becomes anything but? Before a disaster turns your family's world upside down, it's up to you to be ready. Get a kit. Make a plan. Be informed today. Learn how at ready.gov. Welcome back to TV 16. As I said before the break, we've had some warmer temperatures enter into Arkansas, and there is possibility of thunderstorms coming into this week. But also with that is going to bring one of the downfalls of spring, that high pollen count, which we are going to have pretty much throughout for a while. Right now in Searcy, it is 51 degrees, and we have a north-northwest wind at 9 miles an hour. Combined with that humidity at 30 percent, makes it feel at about 47, so it's very close to what we're experiencing. Our record high was in 1935 of 83 degrees. Fast forward about five years, and you'll get our record low of 24. Going into tonight, we're going to have clear skies with a low of 27. Now, for March, the record low is about 50 degrees, and so we are very under that record low. We're almost hitting those highs during the day, and we're going to be hitting some of those later on this week, but we're still very much under average. Going into our surface map, there's really not a lot going on for the state of Arkansas. You see a little bit of a high-pressure system into Texas and Kansas, and, but there's really not a lot going on into Arkansas, and you see a low-pressure system with some storms going on to the eastern side, but there's really not a lot going into Arkansas. And then if you go into our country temperatures, pretty much all throughout the south you're seeing these warmer temperatures, a lot of them 50s, 60s, and then you see 70s and 80s in some of the parts. But one of the things is, is that it is pretty much warmer all throughout the country, and so the country itself is experiencing warmer spring-like temperatures. And if you go into our state map, you'll be seeing that pretty much we're experiencing upper 40s and upper 50s all throughout the state. It's 47 in Fayetteville. That's our lowest point with 49 in Jonesboro and our 57 in Texarkana, which is our warmest point, with 55 in Monticello and 55 in Little Rock. And so the lowest point in Arkansas is at 47 and 57, so that's a 10 temperature gap. Going into tomorrow's forecast, it's going to be sunny with a high of 55 and a low of 44. Going into our five-day forecast, it comes in the storms into Thursday, and that's going to bring in some warmer temperatures. We have 54 was our high today, 55 tomorrow, 64 Thursday, 69 on Friday, 67 on Saturday. And that's all I have for you for weather, and now back to the desk with Brianna. Brianna? Thanks, Sarah. Officials say the number of missing or unaccounted for from the Lakens landslide in Washington State is 176 and that the death toll stands at 14, but that number is expected to go up. Paul, Paul Verkman has the very latest. The mission in this rural Washington State town turns from a frantic rescue operation to a brutal recovery effort. It's been days since any survivors have been found after a massive mudslide wiped out an entire community on Saturday. Yesterday, I reported uh, that we didn't find any signs of life. And uh, I'm sad to tell you that that is the case again today. 
Family and friends of the missing gather at a local church and pray for a miracle as people from all over offer to help in any way they can. At this time, we're not accepting any more volunteers here in Darrington. Uh, thank you so much for those that have come from near and far to volunteer. Uh, we are working diligently to try to get the volunteers that are here today, uh, some of them to, to actually deploy. Teams from the National Guard and the federal government are on scene working with local and state authorities, but conditions on the ground are tough. Rescuers wade through mud and debris that some compare to the aftermath of the eruption of Mount St. Helens. This is about a square mile that's under, you know, 10 to 20 to 30 feet of slurry and, and dirt right now. And it may not get any better. The nearby river is rising and rain is expected to fall over the area for the next few days. I'm Paul Verkamen reporting. The mudslide has killed 14 people and injured over 170 people, and those numbers are expected to rise. The U.S. Navy says a sailor and a civilian died after a shooting at a naval station in Norfolk, Virginia last night. The station's Facebook page says the incident took place at Pier 1 around 11.20 p.m. No other injuries were reported. Naval Station Norfolk was briefly put on lockdown before the restriction was lifted. An investigation is underway. Authorities did not release details about the shooting, but a naval spokesman said the civilian suspect was shot and killed by naval security forces. The U.S. Supreme Court heard arguments on whether private companies should require to offer free birth control as mandated by Obamacare. The owners of the arts and crafts chain Hobby Lobby had, and had a Pennsylvania cabinet maker filled lawsuits saying it violates their religious freedom. The two separate appeals were heard together in a 90-minute oral argument. One of the owners of Hobby Lobby says she is hopeful the justice will see their side. Our family started Hobby Lobby, built on our faith and together as a family. We've kept that tradition for more than 40 years, and we want to continue to live out our faith in the way we do business. The choice that the government has forced on us is unfair and not in keeping with the history of our great nation founded on religious freedom. We believe that Americans don't lose their religious freedom when they open a family business. We were encouraged by today's arguments. We are thankful that the Supreme Court took our case and we prayerfully await the justice's decision. A ruling is expected by late June. The decision could clarify whether businesses have a religious liberty right or whether such constitutional protections apply to only individuals. A Chicago Transit Authority Blue Line train jumped the tracks and climbed an escalator at the station in Chicago O'Hare National Airport. Dozens of passengers were injured. CNN has the latest. At first I thought he just hit the brakes real hard, but after I felt that impact, I knew something wasn't right. Blue Line Run 141 hit with such speed and force that the lead car was catapulted off the tracks and pushed better than halfway up an escalator. Another 30 feet and would have broken through the O'Hare station turnstiles. 32 people aboard the train were taken to hospitals with non-life-threatening injuries, including the train operator who told those around her after the accident that she briefly fell asleep at the controls. That was confirmed this afternoon by her union president. There are that indications that she dozed off, yes. The train operator has been with the CTA for a year and was at the end of her shift when the crash occurred. By the time a train reaches the O'Hare platform, it should be slowing to five miles an hour. But several sources say run 141 passed the end of the platform at 20 miles an hour or more. There is no event recorder on the train, but the NTSB says data from signals and multiple cameras in the terminal and on the train should answer the question of speed. This train had a front end outward facing video. We are securing that video also. We will take possession of it. We will send it to Washington, D.C. for an examination. There are at least three trip arms entering the O'Hare station that are designed to slow the train when it exceeds the speed limit at a signal. In this case, it appears as though the 200-ton eight-car train had way too much momentum to be stopped by trip arms, and the operator didn't act fast enough. The station will stay closed for a while. That's up to the NTSB. Um, once they re At some point, they will release the train, and then we'll be able to, to make that judgment. 
Walmart is ordering a national recall on 174,000 dolls due to the possibility to overheat and cause burns to customers. The My Sweet Baby Cuddle Care Baby doll is being ordered by the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission due to the circuit board and on the chest of the doll that can overheat, causing the doll to become very hot. Twelve reporters have in incidents have been received by Walmart where it has caused two burns and blisters to the thumb. Consumers who own the doll should remove the batteries and return it to a local Walmart store for a full refund. The search for debris from Flight 370 has been suspended because of the weather. CNN's Andrew Stevens is in Perth, Australia with the details. Expectations were high when Australian Defence Chief David Johnson called an unscheduled press conference at Pierce Air Force Base Tuesday. But as so often in this perplexing mystery, expectations are built up only to be knocked down again. The best the Defence Minister had was his confidence that they were looking in the right area. I am confident of that because that's the best we've got to this point in time. He left it to his Deputy Armed Forces Chief to announce the bad news. We're not searching for a needle in a haystack. We're still trying to define where the haystack is. The key to finding the haystack, a piece of wreckage that confirms beyond doubt that 370 came down somewhere in the vast southern ocean. Right now, though, the search is stalled. This row of empty P-3 Orion search aircraft, testament to the strength of a storm two and a half thousand kilometres away. We've got a C state seven down there. HMAS Success has had to deploy 120 kilometres to the south to avoid, uh, for those of you who don't understand C states, horrendous weather conditions. Success was said to be close to objects seen by an Australian Air Force flight on Monday, but close in these far southern latitudes is a relative term. It's very easy to speculate about being close. Close in this part of the world could be several hundred kilometres. The search is likely to resume Wednesday, and this uncharacteristically quiet airbase just outside the state capital is expected to be back at full operational strength. Andrew Stevens, CNN, Pierce Air Force Base, Perth, Australia. U.S. President Barack Obama is meeting with world leaders at a nuclear security summit in the Netherlands. The meeting has been overshadowed by concerns over Russia's annexation of Crimea. On Monday, G7 leaders agreed to suspend their country's participation in the G8 until Russia changes course. Russia's foreign minister said it would be for an experiment for Russia to live without the G8. A five-alarm fire has destroyed a huge construction project in downtown Houston. Take a look at the raging flames and heavy smoke. One construction worker was trapped on the third floor and was rescued before he was forced to jump. Authorities say there are no injuries. More than 200 firefighters are on the scene battling the flames in the partially collapsed building. In South Africa, the prosecution has rested its case in the Oscar Pistorius murder trial. The defense is set present its the defense is set its presents case on Friday. Today's testimony focuses mostly on text messages between Pistorius and his girlfriend Reva Stenkamp in their weeks before the death. In one message, Stenkamp told Pistorius that she was sometimes afraid of him. Is there a quick fix to look slimmer, taller, and more confident, all while improving your health? The answer in today's Health Minute. Stand up straight. Sit up. It sounds like nagging, but it's actually healthful advice. Good posture is aligning your joints and your body in a way that puts the least strain on your muscles. But Dr. Diana Sadiq says we often have bad posture. The biggest mistakes made while sitting are jutting the head forward, slumping the shoulders, crossing the legs, and leaning to one side, especially when driving. If you have bad posture over time, you can have pain, have neck pain, headaches or upper back pain, low back pain, and overuse injuries. You can actively work to improve your posture, to sit properly. Feet flat on the floor, her hips are back against the chair, her back is all against the chair. Um, and then her head is, is neutral. It's right in line. It's not too far forward. To check so your standing cool. posture, try the wall test. Stand about two inches away from a wall. If you have good posture, your shoulders, head, and buttocks should all touch the wall with enough space to slide one hand behind your lower back. Sitting or standing, here's a tip for good posture. Imagine a string pulling from your head to the ceiling. For today's Health Minute, I'm Carl Azus. And now let's see what Natalie Smith has coming up for us in sports. Natalie?
Thanks to Sandra. Coming up after the break, I'll have more on the three Harding athletes who received conference and national honors this week. Keep it here. You wouldn't let money just blow out of your house. So when your AC or heater is on, make sure the doors, windows, and fireplace flue are shut tight. If you're headed out, turn down the AC or lower the heat by 10 degrees. And always keep your water heater set at 120. A little bit of common sense goes a long way. Get more great tips at energysaver.gov. Get caught buzz driving, and you could do some hard time. Craig, knock it off. Sorry, Mom. It could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. And that could set you back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. So what you want to do is, have you already enrolled? You're doing fine. When did that just do? Select the drop down menu again. Okay. Okay. You're already enrolled. Oh. Example here. So don't panic. Yeah. <laughs> You're ready to make your payments. There it is. Oh my god! I really can't believe it. That's awesome. Good for you. <laughs> A full life measured in seats starts with the right ones early on. Car crashes are a leading killer of children 1 to 13. Learn how to prevent deaths and injuries by using the right car seat for your child's age and size. Welcome back to TV 16 Sports. After an exciting and successful basketball season, Kristen Seltzer is a Division II All-American. The senior forward was named third team All-America and the Women's Basketball Coaches Association honorable mention earlier this week. Seltzer, who was the GAC scoring leader for this past season, averaged 17 points, 8 rebounds, and she also shot 51% from the field. She led the Lady Bisons to a program record of 29 wins and a conference title. Seltzer is the first player in the Great American Conference to earn All-America honors, so congratulations to Kristen. She's not the only remarkable Harding standout, however. Earlier today, the Great American Conference offices announced Amber Rollins of the Lady Bison softball team player and pitcher of the week. Rollins, the conference leader in strikeouts, extended her lead in that category against UAM as she recorded 26 strikeouts in only 15 innings. She also set the GAC single game record, so congratulations to Amber. The softball team is in action again right now as they're finishing up a doubleheader with rival Arkansas Tech University. They won the first game 4-3 to three on a walk-off double. And the baseball team is at Arkansas Tech in Russellville this evening. They will look to end their four-game skit at 6 p.m. Harding's 4-7 and seven and hitting 288 on the road this season, and sophomore Jacob Stripling will get the start for the Bisons tonight, his fourth this season. Arkansas Tech is 12-5 and five at home this season, and you can follow all the live stats for that game at the link.harding.edu. Again, that's tonight at 6. And Harding's tennis team fell to Nebraska Kearney yesterday, bringing their record to 5-4. and four. However, senior John Mark Rowden won his 10th singles match of the season, and he's now ranked number 20 in Division II in the Central Region. The women's team, on the other hand, was victorious as they won their match 6-3. The Lady Bisons are now 8-5 overall, and their next match is, ne is this Friday excuse me, against number 7 Northwest Missouri State in Springfield. And the men's golf team just finished a two-round tournament today in Muscle Shoals, Alabama. Harding sophomore Alex Williamson is among the top ten golfers on par fours after making a team high of 26 pars over the two rounds yesterday and today. The golf team only has two more tournaments left before the Great American Conference Tournament, which will be in Hot Springs this year. And Mike Anderson's Razorbacks were not able to push through the California Bears press last night in the NIT Basketball Tournament. They fell 75-64, to ending their season with a final record of 22-12. and 
And in spring training action, the St. Louis Cardinals fell 6-5 to five to the Miami Marlins today, but they will see them again soon on Thursday. The Cardinals will be in action again next tomorrow as they face the Washington Nationals at noon, and that game will be broadcast on ESPN. And that's all I have for sports. Let's head back to the desk with Brianna Cassandra to see what's coming up after the break. Thanks, Natalie. And after the break, the videos that will have you talking are coming in. Take a look at this. We'll have all that for you and more. You're watching TV 16's Live at 5. Oh! Checking your fantasy league? Nah, just my 401k statement. Hmm. Nice. Where'd you find the money for that? I've just been saving a little every month. <laughs> I can't seem to save anything. Well, what about all this? What about the money you're spending? <laughs> what money? It's gone before I can get my hands on it. I got a pizza for a uh, Todd. Hey, can somebody spot me? When it comes to financial stability, don't get left behind. It's 547. Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org. Every day across America, excess food is gathered by a network of good people at local food banks, giving hope to millions of children who struggle with hunger. They've earned their wings, and you can too. Together, we can solve child hunger. Support Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. Brush, brushy, brush. Healing takes time. It also takes knowledge and expertise. Here we learn to reach out to and care for others through the application of medicine and true compassion. We understand that our mission is to take our training and abilities out into the world where they can and do heal the lives of others. For us, that mission began in a place of faith, learning, and living. Harding University. Get some butter and syrup because today is International Waffle Day. March 25th has been recognized as the day to celebrate all things waffle related. The breakfast dish is especially popular here in the South where it's celebrated by the restaurant chain Waffle House. A stunt from the top of the World Trade Center and more are coming up in today's Take a Look at This. Take a look at these daredevils who jumped from the nation's tallest building. Four men have been arrested after base jumping more than 1,300 feet off the One World Trade Center. The jump was in September, but police just caught up with the men Monday. An attorney for one of the men says they sneaked into the area through a hole in the fence. And take a look at this North Dakota steer who kicked his way to freedom. After escaping a meat processing plant and wandering around town, Waldo will get to live his life at an animal sanctuary. He wanted to be free, and here he goes. He's going to be free. Well, not free. I'll keep him in fences. But, but he, he'll think he's free. And take a look at this sticky situation. A tractor trailer spilled about 42,000 gallons of honey on a Los Angeles freeway. Three lanes of traffic were closed as crews tried to clean up the mess. For take a look at this, I'm Tori Dunnan. Welcome back, and let's have one last look at your weather. Going into our five-day forecast, today's high was 54, and then on Wednesday we have a high of 55. Storms coming in Wednesday night, going into Thursday, high of 64. Inter leaving Thursday evening, Friday, still have a little bit of a chance, but we're going to have some sun and some sun on Saturday. And that's all I have for you for weather, and back to the desk. Thanks for watching Live at 5 for all your news, weather, and sports. Keep it here. And remember, you can watch us anytime, anywhere on the link at streaming.harding.edu. Have a great night.